Time now to catch up with our resident bird man, uh, Neil Hermes is our ornithologist. If you have a question for him, uh, 6255-1206. Neil, welcome. Good morning, Tatiana. And I first of all have to apologise. Last week I was out at Namaji and I thought I had a signal and then it disappeared and I may have disappointed some listeners who were... Uh, who were trying to call in, so I do apologise to them and to you. A, that's okay. That's just that's just part of the job description. You're out in the wilderness. You're you know you've got the atmos. You've got it. Yeah, it's it's just it's just part of your job. Isn't part of the it? deal. Okay. Yes. All right. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you for the uh, <laughs> thanks for the understanding. <laughs> now, um, and look, while we talk about being in the bush, I was just, I'm actually just in the park in Woden, and I just saw a couple of uh, black cockatoos fly over, and they are just so spectacular. I thought I'd just have to share that with you. There oh, we are. Oh, that is nice. I love that. Uh, now, yep. um, you know, I always love the quirky, the quirky bird stories. Um, yep. Now, tell me, do birders make good tourists? What, what make do you have to say about this? Fantastic tourists. Um, yes, uh, the, the little story that came out in BirdLife Fur Magazine uh, just this last week or so uh, has worked out that bird tourism in Australia is worth around about two hundred and eighty million dollars. Two hundred and eighty wow. million. Which, you know, is a, a massive amount. And yes, uh, bird watching is a huge business these days. People, people love going out, seeing different things. And the great thing about bird watchers is they go to the odd spots, you know, yeah, different yeah. spots, which means that little communities can benefit from, uh, you know, putting up bird watchers in local caravan parks or in local motels or taking them out to, uh, you know, it might be Bullier in the middle of Queen, Queensland. It might be, uh, you know, Umbacumber in the middle of the Northern Territory. It, it, it spreads uh, interest to a lot of different places and provides fabulous jobs for people who, you know, can be out looking at birds and, and helping visitors see birds. So, look, I mean, there are, you know, some places do get a lot of bird watchers in the same spot, you know, day after day, and we have to be careful we don't disturb the birds in some spots. But, you know, generally speaking, it's just a, a fabulous, fabulous thing that's uh, a relatively recent thing in the last decade or two and look with the COVID restrictions lifting you know bring on them bring on the bird tourists well it's interesting because um so this article says that uh bird life australia's bird and nature tourism report um that looked at that data and and trying to sort of you know quantify um that scale of, of bird watching tourism that it might make people look differently at that little patch of bush if if it means that people are going to come and and you know spend money in the town as well Absolutely. And look, it's important in Australia because, as I mentioned, you know, it could be remote locations. But I've done a bit of, I do a bit of bird touring myself and I've done some bird touring into New Guinea. And it can be everything for a little village in a place like New Guinea where, you know, they might have a particular species of bird. I, I'm thinking of a particular bowerbird up on the uh, Albrecht Ranges in, uh, in uh, uh, northern Papua New Guinea. And, you know, there's two or three villages that really depend on about 10 visits of bird watchers each year um, to actually take them out of, you know, subsistence living and, and give them some uh, opportunity to send their kids away to school and other things. So, look, it's, it's desperately important in many places. Yeah, absolutely. And really, really important for conservation as well, isn't and, it? And, and what it does is it means that there's more people who appreciate the... Uh, I mean, some people say, you know, once, once a, a wild animal has a value, it'll be conserved because... People, people will then have a reason for, for wanting to go out of their way to look after them. And look, those villages I mentioned in New Guinea, they, they will protect the forests in their areas because they know it keeps the birds and they know it brings the bird watchers. So look, it is, it's, a, it's a win-win in many places. Now, you and I don't often talk about photography. I wonder um, what your photography skills are like because I imagine that's pretty important if you're a bird watcher. But uh, apparently an amateur photographer uh, captured nine wedge-tailed eagles in one shot. I saw the photograph. What a great picture. Um, and a couple of things about that picture. One is the Tasmanian wedge tail eagles, which are a different species to the mainland bird. Uh, and they're, a, they're a, a relatively rare bird. They're an endangered bird. There's only about a 1,000 of them left in Tassie. Mm -hmm. uh, but to get nine of them lined up on a fence post, um, as, this, as the article says, vulture-like. Vulture uh, Very sort of Alfred Hitchcock, it. too, I, I would argue. It is. And you, and you wouldn't want a lot of wedge tail eagles uh, uh, bombing you. Um, no. But look, the thing about wedgies is, is uh, it, 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 you know, prior to European settlement, they were they were dependent on things like bilbies. They now mainly uh, eat things like rabbits in our area, but they're very big on carrion eating as well. So uh, road kills along, you know, the sides of roads, uh, that sort of thing. So if you get a, a carcass um, 
and there's a few wedges in the area, especially young birds, they will gather and you get that sort of fantastic scene of that line of birds on the fence post. Great, great photograph. And look, my photos, photogra- photography skills aren't that good. But, um, you know, I'd have had a shot at getting that picture too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd be a little freaked out though because I do, I do remember that, that scene with all the, what was it, crows on the monkey bars and anyway, that's, yeah. I know, but it's all that, that's all, you know, Hollywood make-believe. You yes, know? yes, just, yes. You know, come on, you know, you know what it is. You know what it is. He, they were probably, you know, that was all pre-doing things by was animal welfare people watching on. Who knows what they did to get all those birds to do all those that's true that's true uh now robin called and said there's a lot of gold balls in her front yard she lives nowhere near a golf course could it be birds thinking they're eggs and then dropping them there yes they could i'd ah. be interested to know where she is located near a golf course but oh golf ball do- sorry I, I read gold but there was a slight typo but yes golf ball sorry yes. yeah, yeah golf i assumed it was golf balls uh golf balls are often collected by birds thinking they're food um, ravens will do that a lot and in fact in some golf courses they do it so much that a lot of players play with coloured balls because if it's yellow or blue the raven doesn't think it's an egg oh. so uh, so they can they can discourage the birds by having a different coloured uh, golf ball but yes that does happen um, and it's annoying for the golfers and it doesn't help the birds much either could Robin be, you know, getting into a little side hustle of um, of reselling those balls, perhaps? Absolutely, Neil? yeah, absolutely. Train the train the birds, uh, put a bucket out for them, and um, yeah, <laughs> do a little deal. Um, but, I love it, but but it's not good. For, you know, it's 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 very distracting for the birds. I I don't know how long they do it for. Whether it's something that you know, surf, surf, you know, some birds do it persistently and it becomes a habit. I'm not sure, but you can't imagine it's good for them being so obsessed with collecting golf balls. No, not at all. Now, um, our, our last story is that uh, more than 120 bird species have been identified in, is it Yumbagong? How do I say that park? Umbagong in uh, Latham, Umbagong. yes. Yep. Yes, I saw that little story. What a great uh, school uh, uh, girl, uh, Lucy uh, Weninger, was it? Um, she did a, a study while she was at school at, at Tilopia Park and found a, over 100 species of birds in that local park in Latham. Wow. And that's a that's an amazing effort for her as part of the yeah, school Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, but I would say that, you know, um, in my little book on the birds of Canberra, there's 300-odd species uh, of birds that could occur in Canberra. Mm-hmm. And look, in most places where you have, you know, a decent garden and a bit of water around, you know, you can get 50 or 60 species, you know, in a, in a given year. Uh, but 100 is a very good effort. So congratulations to her and congratulations on to her for her uh, evolving interest in uh, in in bird conservation and bird study. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah, an A plus for her. Um, now Judy's on the line. Hi, Judy. Hello. Thank you. Uh, I want to know whether you're going to. I'd love it if you could go back to the idea of paying a bird, a local bird call each week and telling us all about that bird. I'd look, Judy. I'd love to do it, but between Tatiana and I, we just we just didn't seem to get the technology going there for a little while. But we but, should be able to resurrect it. But Judy. we should. Yes. I think we should. Yes. We should resurrect it immediately and uh, Thank you. and have something for next week. Yes, you did it at yeah, one no, stage. I understand. Sometimes it goes wrong, but uh, it's it's great when you can do it. Yeah, no, no. We uh, we uh, we just have to sort that out. I have to be more disciplined and make sure that the that we have the material available and we'll definitely do that next week and from then on, Judy. I think it's a great idea. That sounds be great. Thank you very much. That sounds good, Judy. We're going to get Neil to, to yes. tell us every single one of those 300 bird varieties in Canberra. What do you think? Yes, yeah, some of the ducks aren't <laughs> that interesting. I look forward to it. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yes, Neil, you know I'm always teasing you that you could just do the, the bird call for me because I'm sure you're very talented um, and maybe after a wine or two you yeah. could you could do a couple even, for us. Even better after the wine. That's right. yeah, that's <laughs> Fantastic. Right. Now, um, the weather's um, still fairly mild. We did have our first frost this week, um, but... But uh, how's that in bird watching terms? Are you still going to get out there this weekend? Yes. Um, well, I'm out having a bit of a walk at the moment. I'm just in town, just at a local park. Um, but yes, I'm. Uh, I'm going down to. Uh, I'm actually going down to Sydney this afternoon. I'm hoping to get out into a uh, coastal park in uh, in southern Sydney. Um, but look, the uh, this time of the year, we're getting our our uh, our summer migrants are all virtually left, mm-hmm. um, and we're getting our winter birds in. Many people would have heard that caroling of the currawongs, which is one of the sort of dominant sounds in the bush at this time of the year as they come in from the mountains and, and start to build up in numbers around the city and they have that 
whaling call. I shouldn't. I shouldn't say this. Perhaps that should be our bird call for next week. <laughs> that might. That might be a tip for those. Well, that's how we know people are listening. If you just already give it away now, that's, that's <laughs> a great idea. Yeah, that's I love true. That. Uh, but yes, we we've got. Uh, so look, uh, things are quieting down in in many ways. But then a lot of our birds start to breed very early. So birds like um, lyre birds are starting to you know, by May or June are starting to call a lot. Wedge tail eagles, we just mentioned them, they're early starters with their, their breeding. So, um, look, we in the next few months, uh, we'll be starting to move into some of the early breeding species as well. Fantastic. Well, Neil, it's always a pleasure to catch up with you. Uh, happy birding this weekend. Thank you. And, uh, and sa- we will chat and next same Saturday. To you if, same to you if you happen to be out. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Neil. Good chat to you Cheers, next Saturday. Saturday. Bye. Bye. Neil Hermes is our resident ornithologist. And uh, yes, um, to Judy, we will try to get back to um, uh, those regular bird calls as well. Uh, coming-